Hi everybody, it's Mike. I'm one of the admins from the Facebook Moon Landing Hoax Group. And today I'd like to talk about and revisit a particular Apollo photo from Apollo 11. And that photo, of course, like I referenced on my prior live stream, is AS 11 40 5903. That's Apollo 11 Magazine 40 photo number 5903. <clears throat> now this is live stream number 14 on uh, number 13, which we recently uploaded to YouTube. And of course I record these live off the cuff on Facebook. Um, I had uh, shown the difference between the old version of the photo, <clears throat> which I'm circling here on the left side and the new version which I'm circling on the right side, okay? And the reason this mattered, just to refresh everyone's recollection or for the benefit of people that did not see the prior live stream, basically uh, this was the original version of the photo. The problem with this photo is that it looks like the astronaut is standing in a spotlight, okay? And uh, just to refresh everybody's recollection again, of course, I'm going to show you a video from our YouTube channel that we uploaded that uh, uh, is uh, from the documentary, What Happened on the Moon. Uh, it was published copyright 2000 Aulis Film Productions. It's on aulis.com. And this was uh, 22 years ago this documentary was made. And the makers, uh, David Percy and Mary Bennett, uh, their staff or crew uh, interviewed the designer of the camera from the company Hasselblad in Sweden. The designer's name was Jan Lundberg, and they showed him the particular Apollo photo in question which is a the old version of this one right here. Now they did change it to look like this. The original Apollo photo did not look like that. This is the original Apollo photo. I'm loading it up here for you to see. So for decades, this is the photo everybody was seeing, right? So this is the photo that they shared with Jan Lundberg. And what I want you to do is listen to what Jan Lundberg has to say. Hasselblad in Sweden was the NASA appointed manufacturer of a camera capable of functioning on the lunar surface. And Jan Lundberg was the project engineer responsible for building the camera. Originally, NASA made all the uh, alterations themselves. Then they presented what they had done to us and asked, can you do this? And we said, yes, we can, and we can do it better. So uh, after that, we put out a uh, technical specification, which was approved by NASA. And then all the alterations were made in our factory. Baldwin cannot be standing in natural sunlight in this image because the surface around him is not evenly lit, as would be the case with light from the sun. This scene is obviously lit with uneven artificial lighting. The prime source of light is over Aldrin's left shoulder. The light is emanating from this direction. We know this is so because we can see what photographers call fall off in the top left, the top right, and the left foreground. This fall off effect is the name given to darker areas caused by lighting a subject with a non-uniform source of light. Lighting that does not have enough spread as this false color version particularly reveals. So what does Hasselblad have to say about this classic Aldrin picture? Does it look to Jan Lundberg as though the subject was lit? Yes, it, it seems like he's standing in the spotlight. <laughs> and I can't explain that. Um, but that escapes me. <laughs> Why? So um, maybe you'll have to find Armstrong and ask him. OK. So now we've seen Jan Lundberg uh, from this documentary uh, published in 2000 state that he cannot explain 
why it looks like this photo of Buzz Aldrin, which ostensibly Neil Armstrong has taken, shows Buzz Aldrin what looks like he's standing in a spotlight, right? So the light is shining on him and you have fall off area. Uh, why does this matter? Because the sun is thousands of times larger than the earth and it's going to evenly illuminate the lunar surface. You should not see a bright area here I'm circling and dark areas in the back if this was genuinely taken on the moon because the earth is bigger than the moon and the sun is many times bigger than both of them. It's going to illuminate uh, the background completely. Now, if you have a spotlight shining on the astronaut, then that would be, uh, you know, evidence, of course, that this was filmed in a studio because NASA did not bring any uh, lighting or studio equipment to the moon, right? The only uh, light was from the sun, according to the official NASA record, okay? The only other quote unquote artificial lighting would be the lights inside the lunar module. The lunar module did not come with a giant spotlight that could be shining on the astronaut like this, right? So of course, uh, NASA um, edited this photo, okay? And they had to come up with a cover story, a backstory for it, if you will. And what was that backstory? As I described in my uh, prior live stream, you go to the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, and if you click on that, Apollo 11, they have a full article on this particular photo, which is AS11-45903. This commentary, copyright Eric M. Jones, private party uh, in charge of the uh, Lunar Surface Journal. Here's Eric M. Jones here. He's the guy uh, that it claims to be in charge of the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. And his explanation back in 2005 is that they had to edit, or not edit the photo, they had to put the correct version of the photo, uh, which ostensibly is this one right here. Why does it look different? Well, because they had, um, it, the antenna is missing in this picture, if you've noticed, right? So all the astronauts had antennas, I'm going up and down with my mouse cursor like this to show you, to uh, radio back to Earth, right? So in some photos, uh, Buzz had an antenna, and in other photos, he didn't. So the question became, why is he missing the antenna in this photo? And I can show you an example real quickly here. We'll zoom in, you can see the antenna right here. So Neil Armstrong was the only one with the camera chest mounted. He was taking all the photos. So all the photos were of Buzz Aldrin and all the official record even states that. So this is Buzz Aldrin. Why does he have an antenna in this photo, but not in this one, right? So they had to come up with an excuse and the excuse was that uh, Time Magazine uh, is where the original photo was published. Okay, and it looked like this, and because it was uh, published there, they took some liberties and added this black part up there so it could fit the frame of a magazine. But they'll say always uh, the photo was uh, like this, right? So this is what the photo actually looked like, and you know, what they did, of course, is they cropped out the antenna. Okay, now uh, there's arguments back and forth on this, right? So, you know, was the antenna missing? And then they said, oops, and had to crop it out. Well, this is their excuse if you want to buy it. But the problem, of course, is that's not the only thing that is different about the photo. The, the big uh, difference that we have is the fact that the new version is brightening up the background to cover up the evidence of this spotlight on the astronaut. So this was the old version, this is the new version, okay? Now, the reason I'm following up with this and providing this background is I wanna show you the origins of these particular uh, photos, okay? So how do we do that, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is show you uh, where I got the particular photos. There's numerous places. One I'm highlighting here, the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal. That's probably the easiest place to get the photos. Uh, there's also 
uh, a Flickr website, Project Apollo Archives under Flickr. And you can go to that and you can get uh, the photos from there as well. But if you want to get it from the horse's mouth, uh, the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal on the nasa.gov website is the best place to go. I'm showing it you right here. And as I never get tired of stating, <laughs> front page of the website it says the journal is in neil armstrong's words a quote living document and is constantly being modified and updated please don't hesitate to let us know about errors we want to get it right but sometimes that can take a while we would like to thank everyone for their help and patience you may email the editors concerning typos factual errors and, or with general comments at Apollo Lunar Surface Journal at gmail.com. What would we plebs get wrong after 50 years, uh, or what would they get wrong, I should say, that we plebs would have to correct after 50 years by emailing them for them to correct the quote unquote factual errors, right? So, of course, how this works is number one, it's managed by a private party and not NASA so that, you know, if fraud is revealed in the future. They could say, well, it's a private party dealing it. We never, you know, intentionally misled you. You know, these other people did and they didn't know any better, right? So that's like a legal strategy, right? You contract out your problems so you can try and avoid responsibility. That's why this goes to Apollo Lunar Surface Journal at gmail.com instead of an official nasa.gov website, okay? As a practicing attorney my, myself, I can tell you this is exactly the legal strategy behind this. So you have Eric M. Jones, founder, editor, emeritus, and that Ken Glover guy I showed you. They're editing this and you know they come up with excuses and explanations. Now, am I accusing Ken Glover of, you know, intentionally trying to mislead people? Well, I mean, I don't know for sure. I'm not going to give an opinion on what his intent is and what he intends to do. And all I'm telling you is that, you know, his job is to come up with explanations and add them to the Apollo Lunar Surface Journal, right? And I can tell you that there was the old photo. Now, we go to archive.com to get the old photo because for decades, uh, NASA only had one version of the photo, which is this one right here. So you can use the Wayback Machine or archive.org slash details slash HSF hyphen photo hyphen AS11 underscore 40 underscore 5903. Showing you the screen and it says that this was added uh, December 11th, 2009. And the purpose of archive.org is to show you where uh, an image or an article or anything was originally from, right? So uh, that came from, there's a link right here, it says source, spaceflight.nasa.gov slash gallery. So this for decades was the official photo, right? And you can see it looks like uh, Neil is standing in a spotlight. But they said, oops, and they uh, re-uploaded the new version of the photo which you can see right here. Okay, this is the new version. They've uh, cropped out the bar, uh, so you can't. You can <laughs> so you can uh, so they can disguise the fact that uh, the antenna is missing, and they brightened up the background. And then this was uh, July 16th, 2010. So we've got both photos. So the question becomes, how can we show that uh, the old photo was not manipulated? and the new photo was manipulated. Well, there's a website called imageedited.com, okay? There's a bunch of different forensic uh, websites out there. Uh, now, the original reason I indicated that this was Photoshopped, and I'm showing my original meme I created here. This is from my website, stratagemsoftheright.blogspot.com. Uh, in 2009, I, I published a, a gallery of uh, image analyses on the Apollo photography, and I had, uh, I've continuously updated this over the years. So in 2020, over the summer, I put this one together, right? And I did this on Windows 10 when I put these two photos side by side. And I right click the details of the old photo. And again, I showed you where I got those because I label it right here. I've got the links I'm uh, going over with my mouse cursor. The left version was the original. 
and then it was replaced with the right version, right? So I'm using archive.org to show you exactly when in time, boom, boom, that was the change. This, when you click details, there's no information on a Photoshop, right? And then here, I'm circling here, it says July, 2000, uh, July, excuse me, January 21st, 2009, Adobe Photoshop. So this is where I first recognize this and you right click and you can click details. Now I've noticed on newer versions of Windows, uh, it no longer shows this anymore. So I go to my Windows 10 on my 2016 laptop and it'll show that. But this is uh, a PC I have uh, for an office and uh, it has updated Windows 10 Pro and you know it no longer shows that. So the question is what software can we use? And there's a bunch of them uh, you can find, but one of them of course is uh, the, uh, let me pull it up here and show you, imageedited.com. So uh, I had already looked at this, it says AS11 45903 new version, it says yes, okay. So we'll test an image, I'll show you how this is done. We go analyze file, Okay, and I have a bunch of these saved here. So this is the original photo I saved. You can see it says the darker area in the background and the hot spot in the center. I'm gonna open that one and it says processing. It says can't tell, image edited can't tell. It says there is nothing in the file metadata that includes this file, that indicates this file has been edited. Careful editors can fix the data and erase their tracks though. So this means you'll have to look at the photo and decide if it looks correct and not edited. Hold on one moment. Okay, so you can see that. Can't tell, let's test another image, all right? So I have downloaded these images. I gave you the source, you can check it yourself. This is the new version open and it says processing okay it seems to be stuck in a loop here I showed you because I just did it earlier. It said AS11 I had that uploaded. It said yes uh, from Photoshop. Let's try another version. Same photo. Okay, yes. All right. So this one, it's AS11 Photo has been opened and resaved with the program. It may have been modified. Photo has, a, photo has Adobe editing tags. So Exif and image data can tell if an image has been edited, but not how much. You'll need to look closer at the image to decide how much it has been edited. Obviously, it's been edited, <laughs> okay? And this imageedited.com, which is probably the easiest way for uh, someone in the general public uh, to kind of show whether or not a photo has been edited or not, okay? So remember, we test the image. I've got uh, the old version and the new version. You can see the brightened version, and then you can see the old version. We click that, processes, it says can't tell, test another image, analyze file, and uh, we go to the new version, and then uh, it says yes. Okay, now it's working. So that was the new version. It says yes, image has been edited. Now the interesting thing is it says somewhere on here, and I forgot where exactly it was, but it says you can send uh, an image to them and have them uh, professionally analyze it and give you an opinion. And they'll give you a quote as to how much they'll charge to do that. And I would love to do that. Uh, we'll find out how much it costs, <laughs> but even if it's a hundred bucks or so, that'd be pretty fun to do. <laughs> so. If you guys want me to do it or you have questions about this at all, you can leave them in the comments. Let's get the discussion going because obviously I find this quite fascinating. 
So it's been great talking to you guys. Uh, make sure to join our uh, Facebook group if you're with us on YouTube. Uh, we have 42,000 members. We're called the Moon Landing Hoax. Make sure to add the hyphen. Uh, we have about 42,000 members. And you can join our discussion there. You can also uh, come to our YouTube channel. And it is the Moon Landing, uh, moon landing Hoax. Okay. Uh, by the way, another channel I recommend if you want uh, some fascinating uh, information on this particular issue and many others is to look up Gerald White. He's got 24,800 subscribers and uh, we got to click subscribe to him. On my personal account, I'm subscribed to him, but I'm not subscribed uh, from our own channel account. So, hi Gerald, we're subscribing you now. And if you go through his videos, he's got uh, uh, many where he discusses this uh, very issue. You can look up all of his Apollo content as well. Anyway, it's been great talking to you guys. Look forward to speaking with you on the next live stream. Take care. Bye-bye now.